The Driftless Area is a region in Minnesota, Wisconsin, northwestern Illinois, and northeastern Iowa of the American Midwest that was never glaciated. Colloquially, the term is expanded to include the broader incised Paleozoic Plateau, which contains deeply carved river valleys and extends into southeastern Minnesota and northeastern Iowa. The region includes elevations ranging from 603 to 1,719 feet 184 to 524 meters at Blue Mound State Park and covers an area of 24,000 square miles 62,200 square kilometers. The rugged terrain is due both to the lack of glacial deposits, or drift, and to the incision of the upper Mississippi River and its tributaries into bedrock. Geologic origin Retreating glaciers leave behind silt, clay, sand, gravel, and boulders called drift. Glacial drift includes unsorted material called till and layers deposited by meltwater streams called outwash. While drift from early pre glaciations has been found in some parts of the region, much of the incised Paleozoic Plateau of Wisconsin and northwestern Illinois holds no evidence for glaciation. The region has been subject to large floods from the melting Laurentide ice sheet and subsequent catastrophic discharges from its proglacial lakes, such as Glacial Lake Wisconsin, Glacial Lake Agassiz, Glacial Lake Grantsburg, and Glacial Lake Duluth. The last phases of the Wisconsin glaciation involved several major lobes of the Laurentide Ice Sheet, the Des Moines Lobe, which flowed down toward Des Moines on the west, the Superior Lobe and its sublobes on the north, and the Green Bay Lobe and Lake Michigan Lobes on the east. The northern and eastern lobes were in part diverted around the area by the Watersmeet Dome, an ancient uplifted area of Cambrian rock underlain by basalt. The Green Bay and Lake Michigan lobes were also partially blocked by the bedrock of the Door Peninsula, which presently separates Green Bay from Lake Michigan. In earlier phases of the Wisconsinan, the driftless area was totally surrounded by ice, with eastern and western lobes joining together to the south of it. The latest concept explaining the origin of the driftless area is the pre-Illinoian continental glacial ice flowing over the driftless area and depositing on it pre-Illinoian till, which is more than 790,000 years old. When the ice retreated and uncovered the area, intensive paraglacial erosion removed it. Anticyclonic snow-bearing winds episodically dropped large amounts of snow, which then gradually removed superficial sediment from slopes by solifluction and snowmelt overland flow washing the deposits down to stream valleys that ultimately flowed into the Mississippi River. In the adjacent glaciated regions, the glacial retreat left behind drift, which buried all former topographical features. Surface water was forced to carve out new stream beds. Topic. Characteristic landforms Topic. Geology Overall, the region is characterized by an eroded plateau with bedrock overlain by varying thicknesses of loess. Most characteristically, the river valleys are deeply dissected. The bluffs lining this reach of the Mississippi River currently climb to nearly 600 feet 180 meters. In Minnesota, pre-Illinoian age till was probably removed by natural means prior to the deposition of Lois. The sedimentary rocks of the valley walls date to the Paleozoic era and are often covered with colluvium or Lois. Bedrock, where not directly exposed, is very near the surface and is composed of primarily Ordovician dolomite, limestone, and sandstone in Minnesota, with Cambrian sandstone, shale, and dolomite exposed along the valley walls of the Mississippi River. Quote, in the east, the Baraboo Range, an ancient, profoundly eroded monadnock in south-central Wisconsin, consists primarily of Precambrian quartzite and rhyolite. The area has not undergone much tectonic action, as all the visible layers of sedimentary rock are approximately horizontal. Karst topography is found throughout the driftless area. This is characterized by caves and cave systems, disappearing streams, blind valleys, underground streams, sinkholes, springs, and cold streams. Disappearing streams occur where surface water sinks down into the earth through fractured bedrock or a sinkhole, either joining an aquifer, or becoming an underground stream. Blind valleys are formed by disappearing streams and lack an outlet to any other stream. Sinkholes are the result of the collapse of the roof of a cave, and surface water can flow directly into them. Disappearing streams can re-emerge as large cold springs. Cold streams with cold springs as their sources are noted as superb trout habitat. 
Topic: <inaudible> Rivers. The Mississippi River passes through the driftless area between and including Pool 2 and Pool 13. As rivers and streams approach their confluence with the Mississippi, their canyons grow progressively steeper and deeper, particularly in the last 25 miles 40 kilometers in their journey to their mouths. The change in elevation above sea level from ridgetops lining a stream to its confluence with the Big River can reach well past 650 feet 200 meters in only a few miles. The Wakan Municipal Airport is reliably established as being 1,281 feet 390 meters above sea level. The Army Corps of Engineers maintains a river level in Pool 9 of about 619 feet 189 meters above sea level, which covers Lansing. Maps and signs issued by the Iowa Department of Transportation indicate Wakan and Lansing are 17 miles 27 kilometers apart on Iowa Highway 9. This is a drop of more than 660 feet 200 meters in less than 20 miles 32 kilometers and this along a very minor tributary of the Mississippi. The role of isostatic rebound on the process of stream incision in the area is not clearly understood. There are many small towns in the driftless area, especially in river valleys, at or upstream from the Mississippi. Small towns in a deep steep valley going down to the Mississippi are at risk every 50 to 100 years or so of a major flood, as with the wreck of Gaze Mills, Wisconsin, in August 2007, or the holding of the levee in Houston, Minnesota, on the South Fork Root River at the same time. Metropolitan areas have flood walls see 2007 Midwest flooding. The history of this portion of the Upper Mississippi actually dates back to an origin as an ice marginal stream during what had been referred to as the Nebraskan glaciation. Current terminology would place this outdated and abandoned period in the pre-Illinoian stage. The level of erosion often exposes Cambrian limestone of about 510 million years of age. The Mississippi River Trench is one of the few places in the driftless area where the bedrock is very deep below the surface, and is overlain by large amounts of sediment. As home to the formation of a substantial portion of the gorge of the Upper Mississippi, this enormous quantity of sediment goes down at least 300 feet 91 meters under the present river bottom at the confluence of the Wisconsin River. In contrast, as the river exits the driftless area, between Fulton and Muscatine, Pool 13, it flows over or near bedrock. The course of the Upper Mississippi River along the margin of the driftless area of southeastern Minnesota is believed to have been established during pre-Wisconsin time when a glacial advance from the west displaced the river eastward from central Iowa to its present position. Other rivers affected by this geologic process are In Wisconsin, the Chippewa, Trompelot, La Crosse, Black, Pecatonica, and Wisconsin rivers, along with the Wisconsin River's tributary, the Kickapoo River, in Minnesota, the Whitewater, Cannon, Zumbro, and Root Rivers. In Iowa, the Upper Iowa and Paint Creek, Yellow, Turkey, and Maquoketa Rivers. In Illinois, the Apple River and the Galena River, aka the Fever River. The St. Croix in Minnesota and Wisconsin is another important river in the driftless area, as it was the outlet for Glacial Lake Duluth, forerunner to Lake Superior, when the eastern outlet was blocked by the continental ice sheet. These rivers all have deep, dramatic canyons giving testimony to the immense quantity of water which once surged through them. The Wisconsin River drained Glacial Lake Wisconsin. Glacial River Warren, whose bed is now occupied by the Minnesota River, drained the colossal Glacial Lake Agassiz. There was ample water to dig a very deep, hundreds of miles long gash into the North American bedrock. Ecosystem <inaudible> <inaudible> The climate is humid continental, displaying both the cool summer and warm summer subtypes as one travels from north to south. The United States Department of Agriculture has the region falling mainly in zones 4A and 4B, with the southern fringe being 5A. A few patches in Wisconsin are 3B. The winters in zones 4A and 4B can be quite severe, with the Mississippi freezing over. Prior to European settlement in the 19th century, the vegetation consisted of tallgrass prairie and burr oak savanna on ridgetops and dry upper slopes, sugar maple basswood oak forest on moister slopes, sugar maple basswood forests in protected valleys and on north-facing slopes, wet prairies along the rivers and some mesic prairie on the floodplain farther back from the river. There were probably also oak forests that contained no sugar maple. 
Marsh and floodplain forests were also common on river floodplains. Prairie was restricted primarily to the broader ridge tops, which were unfavorable sites for trees due to thin soils and shallow bedrock, rapid drainage, and desiccating winds. All these conditions were also good for carrying fires across the landscape. Prairies also occurred on steep slopes with south or southwest aspect. See Goat Prairie. Natural fire, which has long been vigorously suppressed, was essential for the regeneration of such prairies. The Midwest Driftless Area Restoration Effort is a multi-agency cooperative effort to restore the landscape. The main issues are water pollution from agricultural and animal runoff, and erosion. Water pollution is particularly critical in karsted regions such as this, in that it can degrade or destroy prime cold water fish habitat. Soil erosion presents the Army Corps of Engineers with a particular problem, in that it requires them to dredge the Mississippi River shipping channels to keep them open. Trout Unlimited is part of this effort, if only because of the superb cold water streams the region supports. A symposium was held in October 2007 in Decorah, Iowa, to share the results of research, management and monitoring work in the driftless area. The Nature Conservancy is also interested. The driftless area contains more than half of the world's algific talus slopes, a type of small, isolated ecosystem. These refugia create cool summer and fall microclimates which host species usually found further north. They contain at least one endangered species, the Iowa Pleistocene snail, and a threatened plant, the northern monkshood. The Driftless Area National Wildlife Refuge was primarily carved out of the Upper Mississippi River National Wildlife and Fish Refuge in order to protect these species and their associated ecosystems. A particularly noteworthy annual event is the rising of fish flies, a kind of mayfly endemic to the Mississippi Valley in the region. These are aquatic insects attracted to light, which rise by the millions as adults to mate, only to die within hours. Wildlife is abundant with opportunities for hunting whitetail deer and wild turkey. Fishing, particularly for brown trout, brook trout and rainbow trout in tributaries, and species such as channel catfish in the Mississippi is available, with ice fishing in winter. Topic. Other characteristics The driftless area is part of the Mississippi Flyway. Many birds fly over the river in large flocks, going north in spring and south in autumn. There are very few natural lakes in the region, these being found in adjoining areas of glacial till, drift and in moraines. The region is extraordinarily well drained, and there is rarely a place where even a pond can naturally form. There are also very few dams in that the valley walls and floors are very often fissured or crumbly, or very porous, providing very poor anchors for a dam or making it difficult to keep any kind of reservoir appropriately filled. There are no real waterfalls, but some very strong springs bear the name. A modern, man-made characteristic is the comparatively twisty nature of highways in the region, such as in Kentucky, in contrast to the usually rigid east-west, north-south alignment elsewhere in the Midwest. Here, the roads switch back upstream valleys or travel over ridge tops. The route of U.S. Highway 20 through the Driftless, and particularly in Illinois, is a good example. The bioregion shares economic and cultural characteristics, as well. These were federally recognized with the granting of the Upper Mississippi River Valley Viticultural Area by the Treasury Division's Tax and Trade Bureau in 2009. The UMRV is the largest designated winemaking region in the country. The petition for designation includes a 16-page narrative that spells out why this region is a cohesive whole for marketing wine, and is now used to market other products. At the University of Wisconsin-Madison, the Center for Integrated Agricultural Systems Food and Farm Project is working with the region's sustainable agriculture farmers, processors, distributors, chefs, planning commissions, and others to define the culinary identity of the region and direct the development of agrotourism. For instance, 75% of the raw milk artisan cheese produced in Wisconsin is made in the Driftless region. This cheese is made from milk produced by cows that graze on pastures. The region is home to Organic Valley, the nation's largest organic dairy cooperative. Generally, organic dairy production fits best with a grass-based milk production system. In addition to wine grape production and wine making, the region also is known for apple production, and a number of hard cider makers are about to hit the market with product. The region is historically known for grass-fed beef, and has great potential to market forest botanicals, especially mushrooms, to the 21 million people in the region, including the relatively nearby Minneapolis Street. 
Paul, Chicago, and Milwaukee markets. Topic: Geographic extent. Topic: Minnesota. Corresponding to the southeast geological region of Minnesota, the colloquial driftless area, though the whole region was glaciated, begins at about Fort Snelling. Starting as a narrow sliver against the Mississippi, it widens to the west as one goes south. The western boundary is the Bemis Altamont moraine. Another more easily located reference to the western boundary is the approximate line of Minnesota State Highway 56. The upland plateau lies west of the incised tributaries to the Mississippi. The historic vegetation was mixed woodland, with occasional goat prairies on southwesterly facing slopes. In the western section is an old plateau covered by Lois along the eastern border and pre-Wisconsin age glacial till in the central and western parts. The western portion is a gently rolling glacial till plain that is covered by Lois in places. The counties involved include all or part of Dakota Goodhue Wabasha Winona Olmsted Dodge Houston, Fillmore, and Mower. Aside from the southeastern suburban sprawl of the Twin Cities, Rochester is the main urban area. Additional communities include Red Wing, Lake City, Winona, La Crescent and Caledonia. Glacial River Warren, in whose bed the Minnesota River now flows, entered the driftless area just downriver from present-day Minneapolis-St. Paul, at Fort Snelling, over River Warren Falls. An impressive 2,700 feet (823 meters) across and 175 feet (53 meters) tall, over 10 times as wide as Niagara Falls. This has since receded to become St. Anthony Falls. The region is characterized by the absence of glacial drift deposits, the sculpted topography, and the presence of the ancient limestone immediately beneath the soil and in cliff outcroppings. The Minnesota Driftless Area did not reach the Twin Cities or any areas to the north or west of them, rather, the Twin Cities marked the edge of glaciation, with substantial terminal moraines overlying the region. The largest protected area is Richard J. Dorer Memorial Hardwood State Forest, which contains some state owned land, but is mostly private, controlled by state conservation easements. <laughs> Wisconsin Around 85% of the driftless area lies within Wisconsin. The border is defined by the catchment of the Chippewa River on the north, and somewhat west of the north-south line of the Wisconsin River. Where the Wisconsin River turns west to join the Mississippi, the area to the south, including the whole of Grant County as well as most of Lafayette County, are part of the driftless area. The rugged terrain of the driftless area is distinct from the rest of Wisconsin, and is known locally as the Cooley Region. The steep ridges, numerous rock outcroppings, and deep, narrow valleys in the driftless area are in marked contrast with the rest of the state, where glaciers have modified the landscape. Karst topography is most prominent in Wisconsin. Eagle Cave in Blue River, Y and Cave of the Mounds, near Blue Mounds, Y, are better known examples. It involves all or part of Pierce Pepin Eau Claire Buffalo Trompelo Jackson, La Crosse, Monroe, Juneau, Vernon, Richland, Sauk, Crawford, Iowa, Dane, Green, Grant, and Lafayette counties. La Crosse is the principal urban area wholly within the driftless area, while the larger Madison's far western suburbs are located on the edges of the area. The most rugged part of Wisconsin's driftless area is also called the Okooch Mountains. Largely rural in character, land cover is forest, farmland, and grassland, pasture. Modest wetlands are found in river valleys, and along the Mississippi. Row crop farming is less encountered than elsewhere in the state. Away from the Mississippi, Wisconsin, and other major rivers, much of the terrain is gently rolling, supporting dairy farms. In other areas, the rugged nature of the topography in the region is not conducive to farming, except on ridge tops and in river valleys. The sides of the ridges are often too steep for farming, and are usually forested. 
Three units of the Ice Age National Scientific Reserve are located within or adjacent to the Driftless Area, Devil's Lake State Park Wisconsin, Mill Bluff State Park, and Cross Plains State Park. In addition, the Ice Age Trail follows the terminal moraine of the maximum glacial extent from the last Ice Age and enters the Driftless Area in several locations. The highest point in the Driftless Area is West Blue Mound, with an elevation of 1,719 feet 524 meters. The feature is located in Blue Mound State Park, in Iowa County. Other notable natural features include the Baraboo Range consisting of two heavily forested, steep, rocky quartzite ridges with mountain-type scenery, rock formations in Natural Bridge State Park Wisconsin, the confluence of the Wisconsin River with the Mississippi River at Wyalusing State Park, Trompolo Mountain State Natural Area in the Mississippi River Valley at Purrett State Park, and the gorge and rock formations surrounding the Wisconsin River at the Dells of the Wisconsin River. Iowa The contrast between what the rest of Iowa looks like and what the driftless area presents is often commented upon. For counties inland from the Mississippi, the evidence is largely confined to the valleys of streams and rivers. It encompasses all of Alamakee, and part of Clayton, Fayette, Delaware, Winnesheck, Howard, Dubuque, and Jackson counties. Dubuque is the only metropolitan area. The region is distinct from the Iowan erosion surface to the west and the southern Iowa drift plain to the south. A line east of the most easterly tributaries of the Wapsipinicon River defines the terminal moraine that marks the western boundary of the Driftless, with the catchment of the Maquoketa River serving as a southern boundary. The most western tributaries of the Upper Iowa, Yellow and Turkey Rivers flow east and south from the vicinity of this moraine. Outside of Dubuque, this region of Iowa is thinly populated. In the western section, agriculture and livestock raising are the norm. As one travels east, and as the valleys tumble down to the Mississippi, much of the land is virtually wild, with a great deal of it publicly owned. The state maintains an extensive number of wildlife management areas, along with state forests and state parks. The most impressive area is on the Mississippi, between Pikes Peak State Park, opposite the Wisconsin River down to Gutenberg, where bluffs lining the river reach their maximum height. This is apparently an Iowa continuation of Military Ridge, a catchment defining divide in Wisconsin that was used for the Military Ridge Road, a portion of which is included in Military Ridge State Trail, both across the river in Wisconsin. Effigy Mounds National Monument is at the heart of a network of adjacent parks, state forests, preserves, as well as national wildlife refuges, all of which preserve and illustrate the features of the Driftless, where Patchy remnants of pre-Illinoian glacial drift more than 500,000 years old recently have been discovered in the area. Additional protected areas are Cold Water Springs State Preserve near Decorah and Makokata Caves State Park northwest of Makokata. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Illinois. The Illinois portion of the Driftless Area is confined mainly to Joe Davies County, western parts of Carroll County the Mississippi River Bluffs characteristic of the Driftless terminate around Savannah and a tiny portion of northwest Whiteside County are also included. The region contains the highest points in the state, of which the most notable are Charles Mound and Benton Mound, rising to heights of 1,246 feet (380 meters) and 1,226 feet (374 meters), respectively. The region has many sinkholes and sinkhole ponds. This portion lacks any true urban center. East Dubuque is really a part of metropolitan Dubuque, while Galena retains the character of a small midwestern county seat. The valley of the Apple River has a major canyon, with Apple River Canyon occupying much of it. The mouth of this river, near Hanover adjacent to the former Savannah Army Depot, comes close to the southern end of the Driftless Area on the eastern side of the Mississippi see Lock and Dam No. 13. References External links A Sand County Almanac, a book written by Aldo Leopold about the flora and fauna in the Cooley region. The Driftless Area, a landscape of opportunities. Driftless Area National Wildlife Refuge. Retrieved July 23, 2007 U.S. Geological Survey Description Retrieved July 7, 2007 
National Atlas Description and Map Retrieved July 7, 2007 Driftless Area Initiative Retrieved July 2, 2014 Wisconsin Geological and Natural History Survey Map Showing Extent of Last Glaciation Driftless Region Food and Farm Project <laughs>